All right, we're gonna play some Fate of Fluting Death Shadow today. I wanted to give this card a try, but uh, but I just didn't have time to do it before the regionals to get it and get everything to work the way that like you know, so I felt comfortable with it. Um, I'm kind of really heavy on the cantrips. Like I've got ten. If we're gonna count Fate of Fluting as a cantrip, well, I've got ten. And I kind of, I really like having Thought Scour because it's very synergistic with Faithless Looting. Because if I Thought Scour into a Faithless Looting, like, that's pretty great. Um, uh, it's just like, not, I, I guess it's not card advantage, but it's extra card selection, which is good. Um, I cut the Battle Rages from 75 because I don't, I think the Modern has moved into such a place where you don't need the Battle Rages. Like, the, like the Battle Rages are very good against humans. But the humans humans is not as prevalent as it was, I don't know, a month ago. And the decks that are rising to the top of the meta are the decks that beat humans, and you don't want battle rages against those decks. So I'm gonna give this a try today. I'm um, just gonna try Faith of Slootings without battle rages. I cut a couple other things in order to make some room, but nothing super super fancy, I guess. Nothing super innovative, so. Let's give this a try and then see how it all works here. I got worked yesterday at the Star City Games Regionals. It was a rough, rough tournament for the home team. I played against Eldrazi. Um, Eldrazi Tron in round one, and that felt kind of abysmal. Um, I made a couple decisions that kind of like bounced on the wrong way for me, I think. I think I could have, like I look back, there were lines like, like for example, I, I played a Death Shadow when I could have played a Gurmag Angler with the line that like Death Shadow was going to kill my opponent next turn because of Battle Rage and Bolt. But... My opponent had to dismember with only two cards in their hand. Um, so there were little things like that that lost me that matchup. I would like to play first. And I will keep this hand. Likely just go Blood Crypt into Faithless Looting. Probably ditching at least one of these Snapcasters, if not. Because like I'm, I'm likely, I'm ideally going to be delving. And if I delve, like the Snapcaster Mage just isn't going to be great. So I'm definitely going to get rid of at least one of these. And also I wanted... Hey, how's it going there, Archmage? Yesterday wasn't all sad. I had my most successful tweet of all time yesterday. Check out this... Check out this Archmage. This is the cutest thing on Twitter. My opponent's tanking on their mulligan. I'm actually gonna grab my slippers, I'll be right back. Archmage, I, you gotta you gotta link me your Twitter here so I remember to follow you. I keep forgetting about that. <clears throat> wow, my opponent is in the tank. They kept they mulliganed and then put one on the bottom. So let's get off to the races here. You literally just lyric. That's fine. 
All lurkers matter. Blood crits. All right. I'm going to do that during my opponent's turn so I don't forget. Okay, so one of these Snapcaster Mages are going. And I think both Snapcaster Mages are going. I think we're ditching two. I could ditch a Fatal Push. But I think we're going to get rid of two Snapcaster Mages. Here we have at Archmage five two one. All right, I got you. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I just bolt my opponent next turn and then play Angler, and I can leave the Faithless Living in my graveyard. Which is sweet. All right, playing Aldrazatron. Just talking about this deck. I still think I'm going to bolt my opponent because I would like to. You know that kind of undoes me a little bit, but all right, we're going to put this on the bottom. Put this on top. We're gonna leave. We're just gonna leave Faithless Living in the yard. That's that's it. Storm one New York Regionals, which means I would have gotten a roll if I traveled four hours to get there. Storm one the minute the the Maryland Regionals as well. Storm like Storm dominated this week. This is a reality smash. I'm gonna be kind of sad. It's a reality smash. I'm probably just going to trade. Though I might take it once because if I find a death shadow, it turns my deck on. So yeah, we're going to take the first shot. Now we want to find death shadow. There we do. So we're going to put this on the bottom. Put this on top. Cycle into our thought seas. Okay, so my opponent's pretty far off Karn. I think I'm just going to take Thought Knot Seer. Walking Bliss is kind of a problem, but I don't really have a way to get Thought Knot Seer off the board. And my Death Shadow checks this pretty well. I guess I can... Yeah, I think I'm just going to take Thought Knot Seer. They're, they're pretty far off of Karn. We can't push the ballista, but we're going to take... The, the hard part about ballista is, like, we're going to take two damage from it, which, like, we might be getting to the point where that matters. Like, I'm not, like... I can deal with the ballista, but I'm not super happy about it, you know? Let's put a stop here. I like playing... I like playing with as many stops as possible. And we can trade... We can, like, block here, and then the ballista can shoot... Our death shadow but I think we're good with that that's effectively we're effectively trading like two for one so it does feel kind of mopey to lose my best threat but like such is life I might go like if I don't have anything else going on next turn I think I'm gonna go snap thoughtsies and get rid of I kind of want to snap, th snap Thoughtseize and look to get rid of this Karn. If I snap Thoughtseize and I go four, and they hit Tron, they've got seven, nine mana, which means that Ballista kills me. So the hard part is, is that if my opponent hits Tron, both these are pretty bad news. So that makes me think that my best line of play is to just play another Angler. Yeah. Yeah, like no matter what, we're in a we're in a decent amount of trouble here if we if my opponent uh, finds the Tron land. 
So I think my best play is to just serve and then play another angler. Delve the team. And then just have another creature on board and have make them block two things next turn. I assume they trade. Yeah, I'm just going to attack and play another angler. Just keep on leaning on them. Oh, they got a dismember? Oh, they have a warping well. Okay. So now they can go like chump trade. They might just chump because they might think that I've got this made here. Like I, I've got, I've got the game. Yeah. All right. So now let's get nasty in here. Sucks to throw away our graveyard, but yeah, that's what they're gonna do. And we we're in, we're in a good spot. It's so gloomy today in Washington D.C. Like the weather, it's just gray and mopey. So if my opponent plays Ballista, they're dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can play, they can always dust me. I'm blocking. My opponent has like spatial contortion, I think they give me here. Here. Yep. Now this is gonna get tough because if they play, if they play ballista, and I attack with both, they chump here, take five. They can put one, two. How many counters in the ballista? They can't put very many counters in the ballista, so. We're still like having them in the abyss, but this game is decently close. All right, so we're gonna draw another card, which is sweet. Yep, block there. I love an Inquisition of Kozilek. All right, I think I'm just gonna hold that. We can't beat a smasher off the top. Which I probably could've, I should've thought about that. Because if I just attack with this, they chump, and then I could've beaten a smasher off the top. Yeah, that was, that was a mistake. Well, I guess no, smashers, we have, smash only does four to us, I can't do math. Can't do math. I was looking at my opponent's life total. Lost my mind there. Maybe with the coffee flowing. All right. So things we're interested in: Coleon's command, rejection, stroke, and veils. Cards I'm not super interested in. Lightning Bolt. I'm not super, like, I don't really like Snapcaster Mage too much in this matchup because they put in a lot of graveyard hate and I need to be, I need to like get on the board with big anglers. Um, I don't really like Stubborn Denial. Like Stubborn Denial hits, it hits like All Is Dust and uh, it hits all as dust and dismember and chalice, but like I'm bringing in rejections and strokes and more ways to deal with chalice. I'm not like super. And then fatal push is also one that I'm not super in love with. It does kill. 
Ballista, Matter of Shaper, which isn't great, and Thought Nuts here, but that's really it, and they don't have that many cards. They don't have just that, that many relevant targets. Excuse me. I think we're going to keep it like this. I really don't want to flood out in Snapcaster Mages. I almost want to go back to playing Bottles in this deck, because this deck just feels so... It revolves around the graveyard so much that these anglers and snapcaster mages can tax you really hard. But I guess faithless looting can help that because you just like ditch the looting or you ditch the cards that like don't work for you at that time. This hand's a heater. We can deal with a chalice. Play a turn two shadow. This hand is gasoline. It's a relic. Not something to have, okay. I think I'm actually, I shouldn't have done this. So stupid. I'm just gonna pass, rejections this, rejections whatever they do, and then thought seize and then play death shadow. Cause I don't wanna have to thought seize. Oh, they have this, this is bad. I don't wanna have to thought seize a Dismember or something like that to keep my Death Shadow alive. So I should make it so that if they have a Chalice, it trades with this, not this. This, this is going to be to protect my Death Shadow. So I like muffed up the sequencing here. I love playing these kind of decks. Like the creature's worm. Nice. All right, so now I'm going to cycle this at the end of my turn because I could hit a Thought Scour. I would like to cast that. Seer Visions, that's what you want this bad guy for. It's another rejection. Okay. Okay, so they have O Stone, which they can cast next turn. The old... So I think we should take this O Stone, and then... Maybe I just take Worm Coil Engine and hold up Counter Magic for this O Stone. Because I can't deal with this. I can deal with this, and I can deal with this. Yeah, I think like the adult decision is to take Worm and then like hold a counter spell for this O Stone. Because like once that Worm Coil Engine hits the hits the battlefield, it's so annoying. You know, Archmage, you over there making Making all your points and stuff. It kills me. You being an old big brain over there. I don't need your negativity on telling me the right plays. Okay. There's the mine. Basically, I'm going to counter whatever he does here. Because we're so flush on counter spells. Chalice. Oh, we got to get that one. So we know their hand. I think we're just going to forego, well, I'm going to get Steam Vents, because we do have more red in the deck. So I don't want to just like not be able to cast looting if I draw it. It's Karn. I lost this Karn yesterday. Alright, so now that's, that's absolutely gas. This game's like wicked over. Two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to counter this O Stone. If it's a Karn, I'll probably let the Karn resolve. Because I can just kill it. Even if they make a 1-1, one, one, I can kill it. The, th the, only, the way that I lose this game is if O-Stone or All is Dust gets me. Now I want to counter this. The problem is, now that they didn't play O-Stone, 
I think I'm going to counter this. Because I know, I know my opponent's hand. Oh, I should have, I should have, I misclicked here. I mean, I, and the odds are like I'm not going to kill my opponent here, but like this is, I just clicked through this too fast and missed sequence. I should have seen your missions first. But that's okay. Now I'll just probably hold up Thought Scour and Disdainful Stroke. Because I'm not really looking for anything at the moment. So I think it's, it's okay to just be, be reactive here. Well, I don't think I want to counter the Karn. Well, I guess. I guess no matter how they line their hand up, like what I was worried about is if I counter the Karn and then they have they're sandbagging the Tron land or they top deck a Tron land, they go O Stone pop O Stone, and I can't interact with that. That's kind of what I was nervous about. That's why that was why I let it go there. Hey BMJ, how you doing today? I decided to, I, I'm, we're going to try a little experimenting today without the battle rages. I watched, uh, I watched Ben Friedman play yesterday. Yeah, I guess I was worried about, like, by letting, like, by letting Karn resolve and then killing it, I'm worried about them hitting a Tron piece and then going O-Stone... Then going on the next turn, going O Stone, pop O Stone when I don't have rejection. I have no idea how many Faithless Odings is right in this deck. I just put four in them because I wanted to draw them. Like, I just want four. I just want. I just want to see the card. That's why, like, the, my Thought Scour numbers are probably fucked up because I want to mill the card. And then I've got two Liliana of the Veils in my sideboard because I want to discard the card. Like,. If I'm going to play Faithless Looting today, I want to just see how, just completely how it interacts. I'm going to grab some more coffee. I'll be right back. It was very much like when uh, when Opt came out. When Opt came out, I pretty much just like cut my Serum Visions to just put as many to jam as many Opts in there as possible. Yeah, I can see that. So if you want one a game, you're gonna play like three. But I, I saw Ben Friedman go nuts with it yesterday, though, like. He was playing it in conjunction. Like, I don't know what his list was. His list was weird. He played... Yeah. But, yeah, I agree with that, Archmage. He was playing... Friedman was playing, like, a version of Death Shadow that had Faithless Lootings, and he had Bobbles in it. And, like, that thing was just in super low to the ground. Alright, I would like to play first... Alright, this hand is good. I'm gonna cycle at least one Street Wraith on one. I hate just willy nilly firing these Street Wraiths off. I think I'm just gonna wait on this second Street Wraith here because I have things to do with my mana. And if I dismember something next turn and draw a land, then we have two just. Like, the only thing that I'd want a Street Wraith into to cast is probably a Cantrip. I guess I'm saving this for. If I draw Seer Visions next turn, I'm gonna want to draw the land. I think we're just gonna like play conservatively. We can interact on the stack and on the board, so I think we're just gonna go conservative. I'm not. Even, I'm not sure. Another Eldrazi deck. Probably should. This is a thought scar I get punished. Oh my gosh. Oh, I should have like cycled into a thought scour.
Mm hmm. It could be getting thought outs here, which would suck. Alright. Now I think I'm just going to get both of these shadows down. Because if I get both of these shadows down, my opponent plays something other than a Thought Not Seer. Then I'm just going to dismember it and crack them for 42. Yeah. Nice. Alright opponent, I'm going to take my 2 for 1. Is my opponent just dead? No. They could be dead though. So let me fetch. Fetch first. Oh, that was the wrong land. I just was zoned out. So if I find a Street Wraith or another. If I find a Street Wraith or a Thought Seize, they're dead. I think Bolt does it. Dismember this. Take four, bolt myself. All right. I'll just let this resolve first. Mindstone, okay. Oh, Mindstone. What does Mindstone do? Yeah. My son doesn't do anything because they just dismember and they still die. All right. Combo deck. That was kind of cool. Like, looting was cool there. Like, looting let me see two cards, like, dig, dig two cards in order to, like, which no other cantrip would have done. So play against the draw this round again, so sideboard the same way. Two of these. And then go like this. I think this, I think Liliana, the, I think Liliana the Veil is coming back into the metagame to be very good. I, I'm, I've been pretty pumped with this card. I even like this card against, like, this card's not even bad on the play against the Pyromancer decks, I think. Because the way my sideboard's built, I've got Radiant Flames and Last Hopes to really tackle um, their, to their go-wide strategies. And sometimes, like, Liliana the Veil is, like, in tune with, like, or in combination with a Gurmag Angler or a Death Shadow is going to help you just chew through your opponent's resources. I think I'm going to keep this hand. This hand's, like, on the lower levels of keep. But I've got, you know, answers to Chalice. Uh, one, two, one, two, three cards in the graveyard with two mana. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't know how that, how that works there, but. All right, Dismember's a really good draw. So this is getting me Watery Grave, 100%. And I'm just gonna lead off on an Inquisition because if I draw that Shadow, I can play it anyways. Next turn, I'm just Thought Seize. Okay. So we're probably going to take a Reality Smasher and then get ready to dismember a Reality Smasher. As bad as that is. Another, another nasty. Alright, they hit a Thought Not Seer. This is going to get tough. So now I have to trade my Angler. Because they're going to Thought Not Seer my dismember. And then these Reality Smashers are going to like run free. So I'm just going to take this Thought Nuts here. If they cast Reality Smasher, I'm going to be able to help my Delve, which is cool. The little things, the little victories. I'm going to get my Red Source into play so that it's 
I had a red source in play that I don't have to take pain for, which is probably going to be relevant this game. Mm. The rips. Okay. Then I'm just going to ditch the steam vents. I did pay the one that's going on here. Undo. Okay, and ditch this. Whoa. My second monitor just went out. My my OBS is reconnecting here. So, oh, I lost my power. Start. I'm going to keep my YouTube video going here. Um, you can skip forward. I just don't want to have to break it up into two separate videos. That's unfortunate. Alright. Alright, well my internet is coming back slowly here. I could chit chat a little bit about what happened yesterday. I'll put this up here. This is a this is a picture of the deck list, I believe. Yeah, yesterday I got worked. Oh, looks like looks like we're good. our internet might have came back here no it's not but I'll pull this up here yesterday I got beat up at regionals I'm in two and three I lost round one oh, the lights are coming back on so we should be good here in a second I lost round one to uh, to Eldrazi Tron I made a couple questionable like I made a couple um close decisions that ended up costing me like I played a I played a reality smash I played a death shadow it was a 5-5 instead of an angler and got it dismembered which hurt me um I knew my opponent had a reality smasher and I had two disdainful strokes in my hand and I went snap thought seize instead of hold up stroke because I wanted to get pressure on the board and I was worried that my opponent was going to 
top deck a cavern or a map and go get a cavern. So I was really worried about that. And then my opponent ended up ripping a reality smasher and I just couldn't answer it. So that was tough. Um, round two, I beat Mardu Pyromancer. Kind of two convincing games. Like Dermag Angler was the card that won me both of those games. They just didn't have many efficient ways to answer it. Um, then I lost a really tight match to Jund in which I mulligan to six in both games, which was tough. I should have internet now. My internet should be coming up here. Um, I lost to Jund in two close games, which was pretty tough. I'm just going to start working on this over here. Uh, mulligan to six was hard. I made, a, I made a mistake in my in my final I made a mistake in one of my games and that cost me um that cost me game two I took the wrong card off an inquisition and it led me dead to a Kologon's command and what it could do to the battlefield and I should have just taken the K command and then I would have gotten him and I also should have just played faster because if I take the K command and then I just attack with my shadows I might be able to disguise that I have a lightning bolt and can kill him so I just made a mistake doing that, and that cost me a match there. I should be, we should have some internet back here, so let's. Like, we're, we're trying here. My connection was disrupted. Computer says that we're good here. Come on. We are troubleshooting through our YouTube video. I should, I should be good now. Let me try this. One second. Watch out. Okay. Looks like we should be back in business here as soon as Okay, my turn three, they just played a Reality Smasher. One, two, three, four, five, and a tap land. I drew a Colorgon's Command, which doesn't really do a lot. I think we're just gonna save. Life totals here. It's down now. And then just, maybe it was worth shocking myself in order to delve one less card with having the second angler but i don't know how's my bit rate one just plays the end breaker okay that's a pretty good draw so now we thought sees the smasher and play defense here the Seagate Wreckage is going to be tough to beat. My OB 
OBS is tweaking out. I might have to restart my OBS. We're going to do that here, which might make it.